What's up, everybody? It's another episode of Sight School where we teach people to see. I'm really excited about this episode that we have for you, Joseph. What's happening, Marquis? What's up, fellas? What's good, man? They thinking caps on. Thinking cap on. That's what we need. Yeah, we need everybody yeah. put those those spectacles on. Those big glasses on. tonight. Yeah, wipe them frames off so you can see clearly. Let's see what's happening. So hey, we just trying to take them to class, man. Let's go. That's Come it. On. That's it. So I'm thinking. With everything that's going on in the world right now, how are we tackling this this COVID climate as blind and visually impaired people? Because you have the social distancing, you have the using hand sanitizer constantly and making sure that things are clean. But when you can't see some of those things or have difficulty seeing, how do you do it? How do you navigate? So... I'm thinking, you know, especially for me as someone who's totally blind, it is the social distancing pieces. It can be challenging because you may be out and about. Do you really know when people are like six feet away from you? I know I, I have my right. cane. I'm able to, you know, I'm able to you know, have it in front of me and I'm, I'm using it or whatnot. Um, but again, let's say if you're in a store, you need assistance someone's going to have to help you, right? They're going to, I don't know. It's just, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's wild. Like, what, what do you guys feel is, like, how is it for you guys going out into the, the, the general public? I mean, I know some things for me has been a little bit different. You know, um, I have my wife every now and again. She, she helps me with different things um, before the pandemic. But most of the stuff, you know, I was doing on my own um, or – it's something small, like I don't drive or whatever. But when I, when I, when me and my wife pull up to the gas station, uh, you know, I like to get the gas. Right. But because you got to put in the the key number, my wife said, "Nah, you got to sit in the car because she don't want to. She don't want me to get sick." So, you know, there are certain situations where she's like, "Nah, let me let me uh, let me help you out," and you know, I gotta. You know, I, I gotta uh, tone yeah. down that ego a little bit. It's like, yeah, <laughs> are they are, are they like are they cleaning gas pumps? Like the actual piece that you pull out, does you know put into your your gas tank to pump the gas? I mean, my my I don't know. My wife she uses gloves, but the okay. thing for me okay. is is pressing the buttons for the right, like, right, you put right. Your card in, man. Because you, you, know, you got a thing, and you yeah, I was gonna say you got a thing, bro. For us, we gotta get super close to see. See what we're doing, cause like every gas station ain't the same. Some of them might have like a nice, mm -hmm. colorful display, and then some of them might have that, that dark and green display that you can't really see. Cause like for me, I'm just, I'm like, man, I don't want to get too close. So same for me. Like I've been asking mm -hmm. my wife to do a lot more. Well, I mean, and she's already doing, yeah. she know. But it's just like we go to the grocery store. You know, they got that plexiglass up to keep to to reinforce that distance. Well. And I don't even know, I'm not going to say no fault to them, but they move the car reader behind that. So you got to reach under the plexiglass, slide your car. And for me, I can't get any closer to it. So sometimes I'm like, am I pushing the right thing? I want to make sure I'm hitting yeah. no cash back. I want to make sure I'm putting, you know, push it because, you know, you had an option for credit or debit. Mm -hmm. And some, some grocery stores, the car reader's big. Some of them, they're not. Yeah. And I'm just like, man, it's, it, I know for, for me, for, for me and Rubby and, you know, low vision, a lot of that's hard. But like for you being total, what is, what's that situation look like? I, listen, I'm just thinking about you describing that situation. And if I'm at the store and I'm needing to use the, the card reader panel, I'm having to touch it. And, and so now I'm thinking that with everything that's going on, are they, are they cleaning this? Are they constantly sanitizing this and making sure that it's, it's good to go? Because yeah, I could use gloves, but when I think about having those gloves on now, that that interferes with my ability to really feel what's going mm -hmm. on. So mm -hmm. maybe I don't know. I mean, that's that's an interesting thought for sure. I haven't really been out and about like that to be honest, because I'm trying to make sure that mm -hmm. that I stay stay safe. But but do you do you feel like I think I was gonna say, do you feel like being you know? Having a re not that you rely on people so much, but when you go out, you know, someone was to guide you somewhere, somebody was to, you know, we talked about it before how some people are just overly 
they want to extend that help. You yeah. feel like this this might yeah. slow down how how generous people might be when it comes to, to assisting and helping you. I think that people, yeah, I, yeah, I, I would say yes. I also think that people there are there are definitely still some people out there who want to help and will help because you have those individuals in the world right now and they're like, okay, I'm operating in life as as normal and they just yeah. don't take it as serious and then you have yeah. the others who are they want to help but understandably so they don't want to get too close you don't know where everybody's been you don't know if anyone is asymptomatic you don't know if people have it so understandably so they want to be they're cautious um but for me i usually i definitely have my mask on and things like that um, if I really truly need some help that requires somebody, you know, being close to me, um, then maybe I would try to try to operate in the way of like, you know, can we just can we just do like a, a an audible situation? Like when I'm competing yeah. in track of field, yeah. and Wesley yeah. is saying fly, fly, fly. Like, can you just let me know if I need to turn to the left or turn to the right? Yeah. Or straight like where you at and you just kind of you kind of do your own thing exactly. but still have the assistance yeah i got you yeah um but i also think that that's in today's world that's the beauty of amazon and instacart yeah. and all of these other places where you can get your groceries online you can get all of the items that you would normally go into the store to get and and remove all of that all of that uncertainty and caution by just yeah. ordering offline I was going to say, um, I was going to say back to like, even just like the shopping on the cash register, like when you're doing your card, I know that's a struggle for me because I, I mentioned the gas station pressing in the buttons, mm -hmm. but man, the cash register, I'm normally like with my debit card, I'm good because I remember the whole screen. Like when we go to Walgreens, when we go to Fresh Market, when we go to just any Trader Joe's, like, oh, that's what's up. Yeah, I kind of, yeah. I kind of know how to do the screen because I, I, I initially asked the cash mm -hmm. registers at first to help me and then like over time I get a handle of it but yeah. then before the pandemic before they even like before they even like um the pandemic like sometimes they do change the settings and then it, it yeah. kind of throws my it throws my pattern off mm -hmm. but now um now because like I'm not sure, and like they did change everything. I gotta get super close, like I'm all like yeah. nervous and stuff, trying to press in the keys. And you know, if you two inches away from the screen, you know, I mean that you never know who was on that cash register if they wipe if they wipe the debit card thing off or not. So I saw yeah. my wife; she was using uh, her 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 phone. That's that's basically where I'm going. She was using her yeah. phone. Cause it had the like her card already on there, so there's a lot of debit places that have the uh, the like iPhone. Oh, she, just, she just scanned her phone. Yeah, she scanned her phone, and I know you know you got that on your if you have a like a Samsung watch or Apple watch, and I know you know not everyone has the greatest and latest technology, but that is the mm. benefit of the Amazon, the the iPhone, the Samsung phone, being able to like just scan your 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 car and pay for it that way and you don't even have like, to worry about i'm sorry i mean to cut you off go ahead i was gonna say go is ahead. that like apple pay yeah it's apple pay okay because you know apple pay comes from you can also have it wide to your debit card so it's apple pay for the most part apple pay samsung pay and i saw her doing that the other day i'm like hold on like i need that for my phone yeah, so i don't me, have to struggle no that. more yeah yeah, yeah. So if you utilize Apple Pay, then you just you go to the register and just swipe a barcode, basically. Basically, if, if they have it, that's the okay. key thing. Like, I think there are a lot of places we go have it, but yeah, some places you know they might not actually have that. So, gotcha. but do, do you use that being someone who's vision impaired? You feel like that helps you? I feel like I, if I, I feel like, oh, go ahead. No, no, you got you got it. I feel like it I feel like it would help me just mm. to know that like first of all, you know, through this time of COVID nineteen and all this stuff, like I can be safe and if I actually wanted to go like shopping by myself yeah. without having like 
nobody like with me. Yeah, you know, I can get assistance. But um, when it comes to my debit card, you know, money, bro, like, you want to make sure you your your money right. right thing. <laughs> I got I got yeah I got I got I got a story for y'all. So speaking of using the cars and all that, we go to the farmers market. You know, we get them that fresh them fresh veggies. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So they do a great job of social distancing. You know, everybody ain't on top of each other. You know, people's tents and stuff are spread out. So, you know, they say you either pay. You know, you can pay cash, you can pay card, whatever. So a lot of the places, you know, they we you know we pay with a card. And we went to one, oh, it was a couple, and I paid, and they were like, oh, you know, I was like, do you take cards? They take cards. Well, now, especially with COVID, there's not this, oh, I just hand them my card. They they swipe it and do whatever. A lot of places, they have, like, the card reader. They have, like, a, like a mobile one, I guess, is connected to their phone, and they would mm-hmm. stick it out for me to put my card in there, and I'm like, mm-hmm. man. Here we go. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's like we're playing the game. Like who who gonna get to who first? Because I'm going up and and they're going yeah. down, and I go down, they go up and then to the left. Yeah. And you know, once again, for me, for my vision, gauging that depth of how far, or how close they are is an issue. So, you know, there's been times I'm like, well, you know, I'm, I'm visually impaired. So then they kind of well might put it on the table and then you know just kind of meet me wherever. But you know, some people, and sometimes I don't say it because I I simply know that. They don't want to. They want to limit the the exchange of germs, so to speak. Yeah. So then, my, so then you know, sometimes I just hand the card to my wife, and she's like, "Don't worry, I got it." You know, she take my card and do it because she knows, like for me, that can be an issue. And then sometimes yeah. they may have them. They may have them like sitting on the table, but then they got to sit in a certain way because a lot of them are white, like solid white, and I don't. I can't see where there's a a cutout for the car to go because some of them mm. the car goes in the front some of them you, you slide the card yeah. in on the side so for me COVID's kind of made it hard just in regards of how I might ask for assistance or now I might not yeah. just yeah. rely more on my wife where before I might just say something so that they already know yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. that's that's, yeah. that's yeah. definitely I, and I'm sitting here putting myself into that same scenario and do you i mean golly like i don't even know how it would work like i would get the person to hold the reader out and Mm -hmm. i would have the card in my hand and ask them to help direct me on how to swipe the card yeah like do you hand the card to the person on a normal basis yeah, like, do you hand the card to the person and trust that they have on gloves so you don't have to worry about them actually touching the card? And if they don't have any gloves on, do you do you, do you clean your card off? And and then there's the that that strip that's on your card. Like when right. you clean the card off, does that ruin the yeah? Can you, can you right, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like it's a whole You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> look, because going back to what Marquis said, you don't mess up your money. So if you bring that alcohol yeah. across that strip. Right. Who's to say? Who's to say now your car won't won't read anywhere? Yeah, and then the yeah. potential of somebody seeing those numbers on your on your card and taking your information, oh, yeah. like bro, yeah, it's, it's yeah. a whole lot of like, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a whole. I thing. mean, that's the that's that was the thing about the phone. Even though I know that can be a little risky too, yeah. Right? yeah. But just having the money on your card, like, does it seems like it does make it easy if you can pay that way, and it's just a barcode. But you know, obviously, the integrity of of your car—you don't want to mess that up on your yeah, phone yeah. either. But I think that could be a safer way for you to feel like, okay, like I can, you know, go out here and still function, you know, without contracting something because I had to let someone use my card, and, right, right? You know, then I had to wipe it off, and then I messed my card up. So, right. yeah. No, and then, in terms of and then, my bad. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna no. say, and then and then the whole the whole walking, like the whole walking around the store thing. I know, uh, for me, you know, I'm visually, in, I, I have the low vision, and yeah. I know I had I do use my cane mm-hmm. when I like walk in the store or go places. But everywhere I've been, most most likely I have been with my wife since this pandemic started. So mm-hmm. I kind of have, have have had her, you know, instead of my cane. How do you feel about your like? you know, your cane and, like, you using it in the store, do you, like, wipe it off when you're done with, with 
I know yeah, you said you ain't been going out like that, but yeah, I know I haven't been. I haven't been wiping my cane off, and that's probably something that I need to do. But my thinking behind that is I've been the only one touching it. Now, who's to say that, I mean, I need to clean my hands constantly anyway. Yeah. But right. at the same time, too, once you clean your hands, you put your you put them back on the cane. And who's to say mm-hmm. that the cane isn't clean if you're not, you know, if you're not yeah. constantly sanitizing it. So, um, no, nah, I mean, that's a really good point. I mean, I also think about when you two go into the store to a certain degree, you can see the indicators that are, I don't know if they're on the floor or if they're on the, the aisles themselves within the mm-hmm. actual, you know, whatever store Man, it is. And, and so you can see those things. But again, for someone like myself, it's like, all right, where do I need to stand in line or where's the flow of traffic? Oh, yeah, that's what you're talking about. Hey, okay, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you yeah. something, though. When it comes to them in, indicators, man, there is no consistency at all when it comes <laughs> no. to what, what they man. look Because I've been, I've been in places that have had... They don't look huge, like it's six feet. <laughs> yeah, right. I've been in places that have had huge, like, stickers on the ground telling you which way to go. Yeah. Like, it's good contrast, you know. But then I've been in places who've had stickers on the ground with small writing, then it's had like a bunch of pictures on it. Right. I've been in places they just tape, they just put tape on the ground in the shape of arrows. Some places got bright color arrows. Some got arrows that blend in with whatever's on the floor. Right. So for me, man, it's been hard because I'm like, am I, am I supposed to be walking up this aisle or I'm supposed to be walking down this aisle? You know, right. it's it's, oh, it's hard. Right, right. It's hard. It's hard to tell. And then I was in one store. They had the arrows overlapping each other when you got to the end of the aisle. <laughs> It looked like a looked like an L, and I was like, man, I'm gonna walk <laughs> I know what to do. Yeah, I ain't know what to do. I'm like, I'm over here doing the Cupid Shuffle, trying to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, yeah, I don't. I think that um, we had went to Walmart maybe mm. in, in, like in the first month or two when everything happened. And of course, in the first month, we all were in shambles trying to figure out yeah. how to how to really maneuver through all of this, and so even in a non-pandemic year, Walmart is already crazy, yeah. right? Yeah, We're yeah, going yeah. There. And so we go in, it's, it's, it's COVID-19, and, and it was almost like club COVID because everybody was just doing whatever they wanted to do. My friend who yeah. I was with was saying that they had the indicators to let you know how the traffic should flow in between the aisles and things like that. And he was like, man, nobody's following these directions so yeah. at a certain period of time it, I just felt like for me particularly or specifically I was like man you know what I need to just stay in my domain yeah. as much as possible because you just don't really know and right now <clears throat> excuse me we're training for Tokyo and I'm here at the facility in Chula Vista and I think a couple things I'm around a lot of athletes but then I'm also around my guide, Wesley, the most. Yeah. So you just got to think about other people as well. And and I can't be 100% sure that when I step out, uh, that people aren't going to, you know, be around me or mm-hmm. uh, just, just all of those. You just got to take all of those things into account. And and even right now, we're going through the reentry process to go to return to training. And a lot of that is getting the COVID-19 testing and getting tested for the antibodies and things like that. Mm-hmm. Thank God both of my tests came back negative. Yeah, yes, I wanna, sir. I also want to keep it that way, too. Like, right. So um, this is being cognizant of those things. So so this is, this also, is, this is a question for, for you and Marquis in regards to, to, to COVID. How is it affected training-wise? Because both of y'all are preparing for – for Tokyo, you know, you were in the mindset coming out of the, you know, first part of the year prepping, getting ready to go to the trials. And yeah. then, you know, after that, going to the games to be at your peak peak performance. So how has COVID affected the way that y'all train? I know for me, man, like it's affected a lot, but I also know in my mind I had to like make like the shift like really yeah. fast to like figure it out because – at first, you didn't know what was going on. And then I, I felt like, man, you know, some people still training, some people aren't, this and that. And, like, the college that I train at, it's been shut down the whole time. And mm-hmm. then 
the track. There's a track that's closer. That's a that's another track. And literally, I went out there to the track, and just all the people from the gym, like it's a LA Fitness up the street. All of them were on the track, so oh, it's like man. I'm visually impaired. Like then, then you got all these people to try to maneuver around. I, it, man, it was babies running around and yeah. everything. And I'm just <laughs> like, oh, like I can't go back to this track. And it was a track that I normally use. Like yeah, I yeah. used two different tracks. Mm-hmm. I walk to those places. So like for me, on the training aspect, it's always been a challenge to like, especially when I'm like not at the training center with my boy yeah. Lex. Yeah, when I'm yeah. like out here, it's always been a challenge to like find the tracks, get to the tracks, and just being able to train there safely. And then, you know, getting back from the track after, like, a hard workout. But now, since everything is shut down, I kind of, like, made a shift to my parents' house for the for the time being until I can figure out another plan because I have, like, weights at my parents' house, and I have the neighborhood that's kind of, like, more low-key, less traffic. Yeah. yeah. And because I have sight. And I've been navigating this this neighborhood since I was like three years old. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, yeah, you're around. Yeah, man, I I know I know when there's a new crack in the road. I know where there, when there's <laughs> you know, something not supposed right. to be there. Yeah, I know all of it, so I'm, I'm I'm comfortable here. But like where I'm actually like my apartment is, yeah. like that's where like going into 2021, it's like okay, like how am I going to navigate? like getting to the track, how I'm going to go to the gym, like are the gyms actually going to be open or comfortable enough for me to like go to that gym knowing that I I have to look at things like super close. Like I could, you know, I could just feel my way through Mm -hmm. and then I have to keep washing my hands. Right. And then I can use my eyes but if I use my eyes, I'm going to be two, three inches from whatever. You know how it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to be a opponent. So right now, for me, it's a it's a big impact. But it's like, okay, I'm a Paralympian. I done been through it all. I'm visually impaired. I done made a shift. Every Whenever I had to like yeah. make big changes, it's like I can do it. And so that's how I feel. I feel like it, it it's a challenge, but I can get through it, though. I'll figure it out. What about you? What about how's, how's COVID nineteen affected the affected the training regimen? It's been. It started off, of course. There was a there was a halt. It stopped because we had a we had a couple people come down with the virus, and to eliminate the spread, they just they separated everyone. They isolated everyone, which was which was really good. From there, it was we eventually could go out and train in certain areas of the facility. And I think just to backtrack a little bit, depending upon what's going on in each state, that kind of dictates what happens, excuse me, what happens in terms of your ability to, to get out and train. So for us in California, the governor basically shut the shop down. Yeah. And, and so now that meant that we couldn't we couldn't access the training facility, we couldn't access any public tracks or anything. So once I want to say like two or three months in, we started having training sessions at the park, and of course, um, the group was socially distancing and and taking the proper precautions. Now I wasn't going out there because I was still here at the time, and and by that time they had loosened the restrictions a little bit and I was able to go down to the track. So in my head, mm-hmm. I was like, well, I don't really need to go to the park when I could train here and I don't have to worry about being around as many people. Um, so I think that long story short, the biggest impact has been that I haven't been able to train with my guy, Wesley. And for everybody listening, Wesley, I'm literally, I literally do everything with him in terms of running and doing drills on the track and working on the long jump and running the sprints and running the hills, all of those things. We're literally, we're almost handcuffed to each other every single day. So I mean, cause Wes, cause, cause Wes is your eyes pretty much. Ex- exactly. Exactly. So in this type of climate, we can't, we can't work together. <clears throat> 
excuse me. And, uh, and well, at that particular time, I'm sorry, now that we're all, we have the resources to get tested and make sure yeah. everybody's good, then you know, now in, in a couple of weeks, once we resume training, we should be able to get back out there and, and train and compete like we normally would. But um, during the thick of it, it was very much me being outside, figuring out ways to get it done. Like Markeep was saying, as, as an athlete or even just as a human being in general, our ability to, to embrace change, to manage change is going to be huge in, in your ability to succeed in life. So I was out there, let me paint this picture. I was out there by myself a lot of times and I have a Bluetooth speaker. So what I would do is I would have my cane in my hand. I'm down at the track and I would, I would choose a, a landmark. So let's say there's a, I would take a hurdle and I would sit it mm-hmm. down on the track. Now I would take my cane. I have it in my hand. I'm, I'm sliding it from left to right, left to right walking forward i'm clearing out a huge space making sure that there aren't any things on the ground there isn't anything that could potentially trip me up and i'll walk for about 30 35 40 steps give or take let's just say 40 steps Mm -hmm. once i get there then now i put my bluetooth speaker down on the ground and then i would take my my phone turn some music on put it at a, at a reasonable volume. So now I know that I have a, a, a clear space to do some drills and to do some, some accelerations or, or just, just keep moving at the end of the day. And yeah. so it was really, for, for me, it was just a, a, a lot of trying to make that, that adaptation so that I could at least get some sort of physical activity in because you don't want to just shut the whole season down. Um, One of our biggest things was my coach was saying that, listen, the games, they were scheduled to happen at the end of August and in the first week of September. So the goal was to continue training through August Mm -hmm. so that we could mimic what we would have done originally and then take our break in September and return to our, our regularly scheduled program uh, mm-hmm. in October. Yeah. So, um, as hard as it was, and as many emotions and feelings and things <laughs> all were feeling, you had to, we had a time to grieve and, and work through those things, but after a while, you had to return to that neutral mindset and say, at the end of the day, we still got to, we got a goal to achieve. We got a vision to achieve mm-hmm. to get out here and make sure we can still stay fit so mm-hmm. that we won't be, we won't be strides behind figuratively speaking. Um, I, mean, I, I, I think that, I think that's a, a mindset that, that everybody should have regardless of the, of the current climate. You know, you still got to have that mindset that you got to mm-hmm. keep, you got to find some normalcy somewhere in that within those parameters mm-hmm. that are set. You know what I'm saying? Still take care of yourself. And still, you know, like I said, y'all training, getting ready for, you know, for for the man, the end, the big goal. It, right. it, it, the day got moved, but that goal is still set. So, man, that, that's what's up. I mean, hey, I was I mean, gonna I'm, say, go ahead. I was gonna say, I feel like I feel like it's all about embracing the change and then making the change, because like, I know, just I, I just wanted to reiterate, like the track, like even up until however long this thing lasts, like, you know, the goal is to run around the track, run as fast as you can, jump as far as you can. But I know for me, like, I might not have access to an actual physical track or good facilities. But I remember, you know, when I was a kid, man, I wanted so bad. I used to walk up the steps with weights. I mean, it probably wasn't the proper thing to do, but yeah, yeah. Man, I, I, I used to, I mean, you know, Joe. Yeah. I used, to, <laughs> I, I used to tell you, man, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Yeah. So, so with, with Lex and his persevering attitude going on the track, being able to, after everything was kind of, oh, yeah, you, you guys is social distancing and, and um, you know, you had the little space to do what you need to do you still figured a way to persevere. And I feel like that's 
the Paralympic, that's, I don't even want to say Paralympic, that's people with disability spirit is like adapt, like yeah. change, yeah. You have, change you have gonna no happen, choice. but you gotta adapt, to you got to. I mean, you, you got to, man, cause, hey, I remember, shout out to Coach Carter. Coach Carter, Carter oh, baby. Hey, <laughs> hey, Coach Carter told me one time, he said, either you gonna happen to life, our life is gonna happen to you. Mm. And I've Ooh, never I deep. never forgot that. So when I started coaching, that's something I always told my athletes. Like, man, you always gotta remember, man, either you're gonna be a part of the change or you're gonna get left behind. So, you know, in this climate of COVID, you know, like what Lex talking about, what you're talking about, mm -hmm. like you gotta figure out how to find some normalcy in that. Cause you know, for mm -hmm. me, like I'm not I'm not training on them days is over with for me, but like I couldn't go to the gym and work out like I wanted to. And then once they closed everything, I had to figure out a way. Like, man, how am I going? How am I going to work out? So you had to lift them boulders. Man, hey, I was out there lifting, <laughs> lifting logs. <laughs> 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 no, but, but man, now I looked up, man. I was able to find some weights or whatever, just what I needed. But I needed that, man, to stay sane, man, to keep that normalcy. But mm -hmm. kind of going back, something I was thinking about was when gyms do open up. Cause, you know, man, no, no, nothing beats that, you know, being around other people. Mm. Like, I, since I've moved, I haven't joined the gym as I live here. But when I go, you know, it's going to be a thing of finding my way around. Like, are people going to be willing to, you know, say, yeah. oh, this this is what this machine is or this isn't that? Or because mm -hmm. I got to get close if I'm trying to, you know, if I'm lifting weights on a machine and I'm trying to figure out what the plates are set at, I got to get mm -hmm. close to it. Right. You know, mm -hmm. are people, Super are people, close. Yeah. Are people going to be willing to just to help me out when I do that? Or is it going to be, man, I'm just going to have to take a picture of it with my phone and just try to remember, you know, six place down is this way this is and that because mm -hmm. I, I got a feeling man once it's all over with it's not I, I some people yes will be willing to, to help and do all those things but i think there'll be mm -hmm. more people who are still you know shook up from all of this and kind of taking a step back and i and i don't yeah. know pe people with disabilities especially you know visual impairments might mm -hmm. i don't want to say it's going to be harder but it's just another another obstacle in the way Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's going to be whatever this normal is going to be. I think that everyone is going to be impacted in a certain fashion. And and mm -hmm. I think that at the end of the day, Markeith might have mentioned it earlier, but as a person with a disability, we already have to deal with with change on a on a daily basis, society mm -hmm. changes and it could be good change. It could be negative change, but I think that we especially are built to be able to, to handle that change simply because we, we all have a, you know, we all have a circumstance that we're, that we're dealing with on a, on a daily basis. So, um, I think that, the the biggest thing and what we've been talking about is yeah being able to embrace that change manage it and and make the proper adjustments to be able to um to get through that but also educating others so that they can make changes as well i mean I, as much as i feel like we should change everyone society needs to change as well and they're thinking mm -hmm. they change so that they can help to uh so that they can help make make things accessible and accommodate us as well. It's a team effort at the end of the day. I feel like it's like make a world for everybody. It's kind of like how I look at, uh, I don't know if this is all the way true, but I feel like the iPhone makes things accessible for everybody. Yeah. People that are deaf, people that may have sensory problems, people that are visually impaired and blind. Like, I feel like, they kind of think about those things. So it, I, I feel like basically like when this is all over, it's like, let's like all work together. Like, so that yeah, every, yeah. get through, get through life, you know, get through life and be, be happy. <laughs> yeah. I think that, I think that kind of goes back to the core of just everything, even the kind of, you know, where we are right now as a, as a nation, I think if people can kind of just stop and, and take that time, you know, I think Lex said it a while ago so much, just, just kind of stopping. You may not understand, but you're at least trying to kind of, you know, have that, that compassion to say, all right, I may not know what that's like, but mm -hmm. you going through something. Right. 
you know, you can at least acknowledge it. But yeah, I, I think I think that's a good point, man. Everybody's gotta just figure out, you know, what what can I do to help? Cause, cause I, honestly, man, like I said, I, I just with COVID, I feel like people kind of taking a step back, just in general. But then also, you know, you are talking about not being able to see. You think about with COVID, people want that space. Well, how do you know that? How do you know what that space is? And then to explain, oh, I'm sorry, you know, I'm blind, I'm visually impaired. I didn't, I didn't know. Right. Mm. Man, hey, what's the what's our lasting message we want to leave? right now that's a good man that's deep um i mean of course we we talked about the climate for us as as blind and visually impaired and and yeah it's it's definitely it's something that we're all working through and things are constantly changing and we're having to to figure it out on a daily but i would say that and talking about that that big the change like change happens every single day that we're on on this planet and our ability to be able to to manage that and embrace it that's that's going to dictate how much you get out of how much you get out of this climate and how much you get out of life mhm mm Got you. I would yeah. say, I, I like that. I would definitely go back to the embracing thing, embracing the change. I think that's like one of the things that like I've learned over years of being visually impaired, just embracing like, okay, like this is my life. And, you know, things change all the time. Like there's different circumstances that it's just like, oh, dang, I got to deal with this today. So I think it's about embracing that change, knowing that any given day, something different can happen. Um, and if you can do that, if you can embrace that change, then that means you can make the change and just move along with it. Man, I would say, I would say prepare. Kind of going back to like what Marquis said, you know, when he goes to different places, he tries to remember that the system, wherever he's using in regards to the car readers, so I would say prepare for that. Prepare yourself that when I grow go in this grocery store, you know, and I'm and I know when I get to the checkout, prepare myself to focus, stop whatever I'm doing, focus and really look, you know, whoever's with me, ask questions for them. What is it, what does this look like? You know, those those type of things. I would say that preparation is 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 dire. I think if you prepare for these situations, mm -hmm. you'll you'll be ready. You know, what do they say? If you, you stay ready, you don't got to get ready. <laughs> yeah. No. I like uh, that one. Yeah. It that is. It's dire. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You got to be ready. Embrace the change. Make the change and prepare yourself. Be be cognizant. I think also, too, what you're saying, Joe, is once you see that things are are happening a certain way and it's pretty consistent, then you can go ahead and and make that adjustment by saying that, okay, I know that this, this is going to be the first screen and this should be the second screen, the third screen. And mm -hmm. as you build that familiarity, then now you, you don't really have to, you know, it becomes second nature. So that's huge. Hey man, let people know where they can find us, Joseph. Hey, first off, you got any questions, any inquiries, anything like that in regards to site school and the three of us, Shoot us that email at the site school at gmail.com. That's the site school at gmail.com. Follow us on IG. Shoot us a message on there. Any questions you got? Same thing. The site school. And then you watch you listening to the podcast right now. So we need you to like the video, comment below, subscribe to the channel. And also, man, share. Send this video to somebody. Let them hear the pod, let them hear the podcast so they know what's going on with the site school. We appreciate you tuning in. Next time on the site like school. school, get ready. We're going to continue to teach people to see. We'll holler at y'all later. Peace out.